What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Move Better channel. I'm your host, Dr. Joe, and this is the professor, John Penaserata. And we are here today to talk to you guys about some hip mobility dysfunctions and what can you do about it. So as you saw in that first scene, you, we had a little bit of a test to see who can properly do a straight leg raise. Now, with that test, you guys saw that my leg just would not get up there. Now, I have tight hips. I, I talk about this all the time with my patients. People think that just because I have tight hips means that I have to stretch them out. Well, in that case that you just saw, it's not a flexibility problem that I have. I have a control issue, and that's what mobility dysfunction is. I don't have the range or control for me to bring my leg up. So in order for me to create mobility within my hip, I need to work on hip flexor exercises, some strengthening exercises that will allow my knee to go up towards my chest. And in that position, that right there, I want to work on those, on those exercises. It's not that I have tight hamstrings, I just have a lack of strength within my hip flexor muscles. And we do exams and tests for all of those motions. We have a hip assessment video for you guys to check out to see what could be the problem. So is it a flexibility issue? Is it a mobility issue? Is it a strength issue or is it a stretching issue that we have to work with? Or is it just simply a stability issue? So it could be other things than just a flexibility problem that we might be running into, but we won't get into the assessments today. We're gonna go right into some of the stretching and strengthening exercises that may be able to help some of your hip mobility. So without further ado, John, let's lead it through. So the first area that we're gonna focus on is the glute, the glutes. Dr. Joe's gonna sit in that area on the foam roller. His leg is straight on out. He's supporting it with his hand and he's just rolling up and down, all right? You don't have to spend too much time on there, maybe 30 seconds at the most, yeah? All right, then he's gonna cover the piriformis, which is deeper in the hip. He's gonna cross, over, cross his leg over like a figure four and same thing, same motion. You're rolling it back and forth, stimulating that area, giving it a nice good feedback. From there, he's going to take his leg, straighten it out again. Now we're going to move to the side of the hip. Take the other leg over for some support. And we're going to try to get the TFL area. Okay, tensor fascia lata, latte, whatever you want to say, <laughs> however you want to say it. The Starbucks muscle. The Starbucks muscle, yeah, exactly. And roll it forward and back. Use the other leg to give you some support and roll your body forward. Then we're going to roll on to... The quad area, the higher quad, the rectus femoris. He's going to roll onto his front side of the, of the hip, trying to get the rectus femoris area, the hip flexors, give it some simulation. Again, rolling it forward and back, okay? And go down to the quad. And then finally, you want to hit the adductors as well, the inner part of your thighs, because that also helps with the whole hip function movements. And you're rolling it forward and back. Now, at any point you may feel too much pain, obviously you could stop, go with that, go with the, your, your threshold and not to be too, too much in pain. Next set of exercises, we're gonna lengthen the hip flexor. So I'm gonna have Dr. Joe come over here on his knee. So when he's on his left knee, that's gonna be the left hip, hip flexor side that we're gonna be stretching and lengthening. You want his front foot forward so that maybe his ankle's a little bit more forward towards uh, in front of the knee, because you're gonna go in this um, sliding forward um, action. All right, now go ahead and um, put the top of your foot down on the floor. He's gonna activate the glutes, as a matter of fact, of the left side as he pushes his hip forward. But before he does that, you want to roll his pelvis up. There you go. And then slowly push your hip forward using this whole glute area to push his body forward. And what you could do is you could hold it there or you could even go and activate it forward and back, okay? Just like that. Make sure you breathe out every time you're pushing forward. Breathe in as you come back, okay? Then you could add some additional um, stimulation by doing some lateral flexion of the spine as he stretches his hip flexors. And he could also do some rotation. Look behind, okay? Woo. Woo okay, bring it back and forward and lengthen those hip flexors. There you go. Perfect. So from the front view, Dr. Joe's gonna tuck and roll his pelvis back and press his hips forward, add a little lateral flexion and even rotation okay, to actively lengthen the hip flexors. And remember, you want to try to get the posterior side of your hips to activate 
to help propel your body forward as you are lengthening the hip flexors. So make sure when you guys are doing these exercises, if you're going to do it static, you want to hold it for at least 30 seconds or so. But if you're going to do the mobili mo mobility uh, type of hip flexor uh, lengthening, you could do a good rep of 10 to 15 repetitions per set. You can repeat this two to three times, two to three sets, and that will you will feel the difference in the lengthening of those hip flexors. <laughs> Okay, so now what we just did there was we worked on activating, stimulating the muscles. Even when we say we lengthen the tissues, I said in the very beginning of this that sometimes we don't want to overly lengthen the tissues. We wanted to work more on the mobility aspect. So we're just trying to stimulate the area, stimulate the muscles, and trying to get them to activate and communicate with the brain a little bit more. And that's what those first two steps are. Now we got to get into the activation aspect of things by strengthening, stabilizing, isometrically communicating that muscle to the brain. When I say isometric, we're not changing the position of the joint. We're just trying to create a minor contract or a, a, a contraction of the muscle to create better range of motion. So for John's purposes, I'm just gonna have him lay down. You're gonna place your hands on that ball. Now you're gonna bring your right knee to that ball. And so we're gonna look like we're in somewhat of a dead bug position here. And so the ball is pressed against his knee, his arms are straight up, and he's just allowing this ball to create a feedback loop into that hip. As he's pressing his hands into the ball and his knee back against the ball, he's creating a feedback loop that's allowing for an isometric contraction. Now we're not contracting anymore, we're not pushing the knee any further, we're not changing the position of the knee and the hip. We're just allowing the muscle to contract slightly and leaving it in a position to where it starts to create that communication pathway. Now, as he's holding himself here, after we do about 30 seconds in one set, we just start to recreate that straight leg raise as he presses his hands against the ball. Now this in itself, because for me personally, it's a weak area, now I'm trying to strengthen that to create more hip mobility. Remember, hip mobility and flexibility are two completely separate things. Although flexibility is a part of the mobility component, mobility is how much control you have around that joint. And right now, we're creating that control, that strength control of that hip going up and down, as well as creating a flexibility component to the posterior chain of his hamstring, his glutes, his knee, his ankle, all the way up. Good, and after about 15 repetitions of that, now we've created somewhat of some strength and we wanna move you guys forward from that position. So a progressive exercise that I wanna do in order to fix that hip mobility or that control of that joint during straight leg raise is I'm gonna have John here kneel down. And remember, this is for me personally to, in order for me to create change within my hip flexors. So in his case now, I wanna to try to create the strength in a kneeling position. Whereas one side he's allowing the load and he's creating stability on his right side. His left side is now going to raise up and he's simply just trying to raise his knee up while pressing his hands down into the ground here. If you don't have sticks or anything to hold, hold you up, just go into a doorway, hold on to the doorway and just work on driving that knee up. We're just trying to create tension within this area and we're not working on rotational aspects just yet. Just because I know that his hip flexor muscles are underactive, I wanna to try to create strength in this position to create that activity that I need in order to allow control and mobility of my hip. So as he's pushing down, or in your case, if you're in front of a wall or you're a doorway, you're pushing out away from the doorway and you're using that feedback loop to help increase control over that hip. Now, go ahead and relax. Pushing down on that bar will allow, or pushing outside on the doorway will allow the core to activate uh, just enough to allow the hip to do what it needs to do on its own, which is hip flexion. And that's the reason why we're utilizing these feedback loops, such as that we did with the ball, with a stability ball, or the doorway, or these sticks that he pushes down upon. So that way, we can allow the hip to do what it needs to do, which is 
work on hip flexion. Now remember, hip mobility, there's a lot more aspects to range of motion and control over the hip other than just hip flexion and extension like we showed you here today. The hip mobility joint is a, or the hip joint, excuse me, is a mobile joint, which is a ball and socket, and it has more than one aspect in range of motion. It doesn't just go forward and back, it goes in a circle. So it, it, it's a ball and socket. It goes in all different directions and all different planes of motion. And we wanna make sure that we have control over all of those aspects. Today, we just focused on hip flexion and extension exercises that may be able to help your overall control of your hip. Be sure to check out some of our other videos on how to retrain hip mobility in a lateral aspect or a movement in a frontal plane aspect or a transverse, which is more of a rotational aspect. We're gonna have a lot more videos for you to, to share with you guys on how we can help fix some of your hip mobility. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you liked what we just did. Subscribe, check, mark, comment, share everything that we're doing to others and family members, and look out for our next video. This is Dr. Joe, I'm Jumping Estrada. See you soon.